Hey everyone, it's Wilson. We're gonna start a win with Wilson where we field questions from the previous week that you have regarding business building, real estate, whatever it is. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, social platforms, text us, email us, any questions that you have. Uh, specifically on Instagram, at Wilson, W-L-R-E-A. Look forward to answering some of your questions. Can't wait for you to see some of the questions we answered this week and hopefully it's helpful. Thank you, Troy, for the question. It's a great question. Many agents in the industry, they have a hard time figuring out what's the best use of their time. And some don't realize that if they don't wake up as if it's a normal job, they're gonna lose out on momentum throughout the day. They're not gonna be as disciplined. And when that phone call comes, when a buyer and seller needs your help, it's gonna be a little bit different than if you came prepared for the day, you showed up in the morning, you actually talked about things that were important that happened the previous day and things that you look forward to the next day. So our team meets four days a week, every morning, 8.30 as a group, salespeople and admin alike. Every day we start at our, with our huddle. We talk about our gratitudes for the day, what happened the previous day, our wins, and also some of the hurdles that we've encountered. We also role play and script practice. Also, what we talk about is sometimes we have a role play session where we anonymously give post-it notes and people talk about limiting beliefs or scripts or things that they want to practice and we practice it as a group. After that, in the morning, we all jump in our calls, reach out to people that we want to have conversations with. In the afternoon, it's going to be a little bit more flex. As in, you will have appointments, some agents might go out and door knock, some agents might have coffee dates. The general idea is we meet every morning at a certain place in time. We start off our day strong. By the afternoon, everyone has their own obligations. At the very minimum, we do have a expectation that everyone lead gens a certain amount every day for five days a week. So hopefully that gives you a good idea. Thanks, Chuck. Jamie, that's a great question. A lot of people assume that when you build a big team, your quality of life goes down and you have less time to spend with the ones that you love, whether it's family, friends, whatever it is. And hopefully you love your team members too. I found that quality of life actually improves because I have different duties as I did versus if I was a solo agent. As a solo agent, I had to do everything from meeting clients to researching to prepping paperwork. Everything was done by one person. Imagine if a doctor had to do everything from keeping up with clients to diagnosing, prescribing, collecting payment, and obviously making sure that they ask the nurse questions and is the receptionist as well. It just doesn't make sense. So my quality of life is actually better that I have people that are specifically performing specific things in our business. And what that has afforded me to do is if I have other people doing things that I don't enjoy doing or that I do not choose to do, and I want to have a higher dollar per hour wage by building relationships and having conversations in our community, and I'm focused on that, that means when I take time off from the business, what I'm more willing to do is spend time with my family, spend time with the loved ones that are important to me, spend time with my friends. And that obviously is a benefit. Whether I take a week off, a month off, there's years where I've taken two months off of work, my income is consistent, the income of my people is consistent because they obviously have things that they are obligated to do in the business and they enjoy doing. So I think it's a balance of making sure that the people in your business you find the right people behaviorally, and you find the right people that uh, like the work that they do, whether it's transaction management, whether it's meeting with buyers specifically, whether it's um, making sure that we're on track as a director of ops, whatever it may be, there's certain people suited for certain jobs. And as we grow as a team, there's specificity in everything that we do. And there's people focused on those activities. And actually everyone has a better way of life because we don't have to dabble and and be a jack of all trades? That's a great question. There's so much that I could provide in terms of feedback for you, uh, Sharon. And if I had to give one advice, it has to be taking into consideration that our business is all about relationships, like any other business. So unless we have relationships, we're not gonna be able to sell our products or services, whether it's real estate or anything else. So the most important thing for us to do is to keep track of relationships that we're building. 
follow up with relationships and strengthening relationships that we have. And obviously building new relationships uh, with people that we don't have relationships with. Um, and keeping track of that every day. So whether it's a goal for you to talk to five, 10, 20 people that are new, um, that you've never met before, that's what it takes. And that's for any business. That's for the retail business, for restaurants, that's for service-based businesses, that's for wholesaling, product-based businesses. How many people are you talking to every day? And once you're talking to a volume of people, then you can hone in on a skill and you can hone in on the quality of the conversation. What are you talking about? You can become a little bit more purposeful at that point. Hopefully that helps. It's a great question. And um, what I can share with you is related to the previous answer I gave regarding relationships. This business is about relationships. So making sure that you actually care for the people that you are encountering that you are genuinely curious about them and their situation. And as they speak to you, you are hearing them with both your ears versus preparing what you're gonna say next. And you carry it out with every single person you encounter, constantly having conversations, making sure that obviously you're advancing and if there's an opportunity to provide your service or your product, that you ask them first about them and their predicament and what they're thinking about so you can offer them something, hopefully, something of value to them. So uh, early on, I would say my failure is not, not seeing that relationships mattered so much. And what it reminds me of is the seven habits, which I've shared so, so much recently, where the seven habits are segmented into three portions. It's gonna be uh, dependence, independence, and interdependence, where we grow up depending on other people and we get to a point where we want to be independent. And eventually we realize, hopefully, most of us realize that in order for us to get further, faster advancement in life, be more successful, build more relationships, uh, care for our community, whatever it may be, that what's most important is other people. And we have to depend on other people as much as they depend on us. And that's where interdependence comes from. So realizing that earlier on in my life that relationships really matter. I love that, thank you, Tyler. And you know what, a lot of people do believe that the busier you are, the more families you help in real estate, the less time you can spend with your family. And I know exactly what my spouse would say because she works in the business too. She and I, we are both working towards a better future together. If we are able to spend more time right now working in the business and building it and being responsible to our team members and our clients and obviously having them work on the things that they love and enjoy too, we're going to get to a point where we're going to have a little bit more leverage in our, in our life and we will be able to create the lifestyle and we are in the process of having a lifestyle which we afford ourselves more time if we choose to take more time off or whatever it may be that we're pursuing, whether it's pursuing a investment property that we want to purchase. So overall, she would say that she and I, we are aligned in working towards a goal of wanting something better, and we're working towards it. And real estate sales or building a real estate team is our avenue, is our method uh, of getting to a better place. Versus if we compare it to, she used to have a nine to five job at corporate, where she had limited control of exactly what she could do in getting a promotion, or limited control of getting a raise, right? In our field, results and time and effort truly become a, and you can see the fruition of your labor. So just like us being the business owners and the leaders, also we are examples to our team members. I want to make sure that what I'm achieving is also achievable for my team members. And it's a matter of time, effort, and will, and of course them pursuing their passion them quantifying on paper and writing down what their goal is as well. And if they have a spouse, they should share it with their spouse so they should be aligned in goals too. So that's a great question. Thanks for asking. That's a great question. We're getting specific here. So my two top employees are going to be my director of ops and listing coordinator. And also it's going to be uh, my transaction manager. I'll talk about my transaction manager first. She started 
in my business as an executive assistant and she stayed with us for the last four years and she's still a major part of our success. And for her specifically, compensation was important, but spending time with family was even more important. And she's from San Diego. So what I've allowed her to do is number one, every quarter we make sure that she spends one week working from home from San Diego and I pay for her trip to be in San Diego so she can work from home, spend time with her family. Secondly, she wanted to increase her income and every single position in any business always has a cap in terms of how much you could potentially earn. So what we ended up doing was in real estate, you always can make referral fees. Additionally, we started a transaction management business where her and I are partners, where the better the business did, the more transactions we helped with the agents, the more bottom line net revenue that she would be able to make as well. So not only is she maintaining her salary, she has opportunities for referrals. She gets to work from home every quarter because that's important to her because she told me, and it's important for obviously you to have open conversations one-on-one -on -one with the important people in your life because they help you in your life and they obviously have ambitions and you want to make sure that they achieve it too. But also we started the business together because in four years of time, she's earned it, right? And this opportunity was a brainstorm amongst both of us. It's not just me being a leader and saying, hey, this is an opportunity, do you want it? But her verbalizing what she wants to achieve, which is a better way of life, which is maybe one day she wants a little bit of leverage as well, be a business owner and control a little bit more about her income and her time. And that's what, what we did for her. Second person that earns the most is going to be our director of ops. Our director of ops earns a base pay plus a net profit of how our business does. So if our business is booming and doing better and we're helping more families, at the end of the year if our net is better, then she makes a certain percentage of the net. So it's directly correlated to the results that we get. Hopefully that gives you some insight and some ideas for some of the staff members that you have. Great question. Christina, that's a great question. I think if I didn't love what I did, I wouldn't be here. And I would dread every day. I would dread when things get tough and I would probably quit earlier. What I can share with you is what I love is not necessarily real estate. Just like when someone opens a boba shop or a coffee shop, whatever it is, they may or may not love the product or service they provide. But what I do know is most of these people love serving people love providing something for other people. So what you'll come to find is any business that is successful, there are other people involved and we have to provide something of value to them. So the general idea is I do love helping people. And when I wake up and when I think about the people that I've already helped in the past, the people that are actively working with me and the people that I haven't met yet, because I know that if I don't put myself in a position to be uh, in front of them and for them to notice me, to notice our services and our team, then I'm doing a disservice for those people because I know in our marketplace we do a great job and that it would be a disservice if they never got to know me or my team. So yes, I do love what I do. I love helping people. I love that question. And I'll give you a principal way of thinking about this. My mentor, Ben Kenny, shout out to Ben Kenny. Uh, and Ben Kenny training up in Bellingham, Washington, gave me a good rule of thumb. And also Elizabeth Curry, my previous coach at Maps Business Coaching or Maps Coaching. And what they said was we should spend our time in three buckets. Number one is lead generation and finding clients. Number two is lead generation and finding good people for your team. Number three is training, coaching, mentoring the people that are important in your life, so your team members. Luckily for us, when we train, we can literally be lead genning for talent and lead genning for business. So we are the example to our team members. So when we are doing the activities that drive our business, which is looking for people and building relationships, hopefully your people see that as training. They're seeing you live in action doing what you should be doing. So basically when you are training your people, you are already taking care of the two most important things in your business. Both of them are tied to lead generation slash relationship building. So good question. I really appreciate the questions. For those that this was helpful, please comment. 
uh, find me on Instagram, Wilson, W-L-R-E-A. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment as well or uh, direct message me, send me an email, whatever it is, reach out. We would love to feature your question on the future Win With Wilson Q&A. And that way, at least, I know exactly what other people are thinking of and how we can help. So thank you so much.